Good evening, Xander. Thank you. Hello. For, hi. Thanks for joining uh, my new podcast at Guadalajara Geopolitics. Well, Mr. Morris, thanks for having me on your program. It's a pleasure uh, to be here. Great opportunity to connect with new people and discuss the other things that everyone needs to be known about. And uh, I've been running FSD for almost seven years now, and FSD is an open source information portal that covers technology news, economics news, political news, warfare dynamics information from all over the world. FSD is not a left or right website. It is a website that just gives satirical data, which is actually not satirical, it's serious information, but it's presented in a um, clever way to digest for the reader. And I myself, I'm a former U.S. Marine currently. I am a um, IT technician specializing in cybersecurity. So in, in my spare time, I'm running FSD, but other than that, most of my duties throughout the week, throughout the work week, are dealing with computers and everything related to them because information is actually the monopoly on information is why there is injustice in the world. Mm -hmm. I've said that many times. So I want to give a docking station to people where they could look at information that's being ignored. And everyone always complains about how, hey, the mainstream media, the corporate media is not covering this. Well, to tell you the truth, those within the mainstream corporate media are covering important topics. It's just that their editors, their website managers, their newspaper editors and managers are burying stories that affect people. I'm merely bringing to the forefront what the editors have been burying. And, and we've heard countless examples of that, like the German journalists whose name I forget who recently came out you know conveniently as he retired uh, you know not to not to say anything against him in that sense but um, how the CIA basically uh, paid him to post pro Washington um, news in Europe so we, we have plenty of examples of, of what you're talking about well that's what's going on and it's unfortunate and people are so busy they're so stuck in their own little bubble because they're trying to survive. Most people are debt slaves, okay? And in order for that to go away and for humanity to have a global awakening of consciousness, people have to learn about how money truly works. Money is not inherently evil. It's how you use it. Jesus talked about the love of money is the root of all evil. Sure, it's a tool. You wield that tool in a negative manner that gives you monopolies and helps you in covert ways to dominate and stifle competition. The whole point of the name Full Spectrum Dominance, full-spectrum-dominance.com, for your listeners, that they would go check out my site, and I recommend that they do. Full Spectrum Dominance is a military concept that the U.S. Department of Defense came up with after the Second World War. In the 1950s, when aerospace weapon systems with the Air Force and the Navy were really starting to advance with uh, the advent of nuclear propulsion for surface warfare vessels as well as submarines and the jet age with aircraft, you saw a whole new era of waging war. And it went simply not from just mechanized divisions, infantry going into urban centers, now it morphed into adding what? Space systems, space dominance, going into cyber warfare, which is very prevalent now. And more importantly, what a lot of military analysts, they don't discuss, either because they have an agenda and they don't want the public to be aware, or they just forget because they're so busy. Full spectrum dominance in a military tactical and strategic sense went into controlling the consumer base, to controlling the citizenry. Because you have to understand, in recent history, with the fall of the Berlin Wall and the end of the Cold War, we had this massive military juggernaut that was created for this standoff between the Soviet East and um, the United States at the top of the Alliance of the West. Well, all these weapons manufacturing firms and support companies invested all this money as well as government. So you had all these things that were never used in actual battle. What do you do to keep that money machine rolling forward, you turn it inwards. Just because the Berlin Wall went down doesn't mean that people were to join 
in a physical sense from Eastern to Western Germany. No, now the people of Western Germany are behind the wall. It's just a virtual wall. It's a wall that you don't see. And that's where we're at now. And uh, just to clarify, from what I recall, officially the doctrine, doctrine was put into policy paper in the 90s. But you say, I guess, unofficially, it goes all the way back to World War II with the American century and all of that, no? Well, sure. Well, officially, it was all the way back to the early 50s with the dawn of the Korean War. But many things that are developed with the government secretly, they're not really declassified until many decades or even in some circumstances centuries later. Because after all, the technology that is available to us in the consumer marketplace is really 30, 35 years behind what is secretly being constructed in a research and development environment, whether in a corporate private sector realm or in a military government realm. And I believe that was a quote, if I recall, from the vice president of Raytheon. Uh, I'm not sure who mentioned that, that they asked him, uh, you know, how advanced is your uh, technology? And he said, you know, have you seen Star Trek? Well, we've been there, done that. So. Well, that'd be nice. The thing about Star Trek that's cool is that people get along, and hey, that's 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 great. We can cure these diseases, and we can explore things and learn new stuff about ourselves, which is, I'm all for that. People miss the um, defining argument of Gene Roddenberry's fantasy world, which is that humanity fought a thermonuclear war in the middle of the 21st century and spent almost a hundred years after that rebuilding global civilization. But we learned a valuable lesson. What worries me is that the inevitable global catastrophe that shall affect all of us in this century on a, on a physical, violent, disease-laden plane, I fear that that tribulation is not going to remove all of the instigators of that catastrophe because the super duper powerful powerful power brokers they have all their contingency plans in place because they're so drunk on power that their micromanaging of economies and central planning of nations and regions is backfiring but they're but but they're crazy you have to ask yourself both you and your listeners family members work colleagues whatever you have to ask yourself does a normal human being think about controlling millions and billions of other human beings? Do, do they think about controlling nature and the universe itself? No. Those that have the power, they think about that stuff. So that's not normal human behavior. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what uh, you know. one of the last guests I spoke to, Daniel Ganser, the Swiss academic, told us that it's, you know, he said exactly that, you know, 95% of people just want to live a nice life, you know, make enough money and fall in love. And it's those, you know, one, five percent of people that are just insane. Um, and I was going to ask you before we get into what, what, uh, the crises, you, you served, I guess, in the armed forces. And how many of your colleagues or, or people that you've come across in, in the military or, or wherever are, are they awake to these things? It, it, my guess is that the longer that they serve, they things just start to become obvious. What's your take? Many are aware. There's a variation in the level of comprehension of what's occurring. But even though many are aware, many veterans are so beaten down physically with exposure to combat environment, whether being physically wounded, psychologically wounded, they return home, their country doesn't give them anything. Even what servicemen are promised, medical care, assistance with mortgages for purchasing a home, assistance with education, having respect of society, finding a quality mate to settle down with and start a family. That was in the past. That doesn't exist anymore. Servicemen, my warning to you is do not expect that you are going to get anything in return. It's not going to happen. You need to take your experiences of being in the military, whether you were deployed or not, 
You need to take those lessons and use it in a way that you can benefit from. Okay. And there are some that are in the military who are simply there because they don't see the big picture. They just want a paycheck. They want to go for the 20 year mm -hmm. service time to get their in introductory pension percentage. And of course you have those true believers and those true believers are very dangerous that even though as an enlisted person, you swear an oath to protect the constitution. Okay. If you see something that is unlawful, you're, you're supposed to not follow unlawful orders, but everything is so skewed. Now there has been so much psychological manipulation of the military because as one of my drill instructors told me when I went into the Marine Corps many moons ago, the military is a direct reflection of American society. And less than 1% of Americans have any connection to military life, serving themselves or having a family member that's been in there. And um, that is detrimental to our survival as a nation, not only for America, but it's also detrimental to the uh, survival of, North, of the North American community with Canada, Mexico, as well as Central and South America. Because after America sold the Panama Canal to China, there is no more strategic ownership of that gateway between the two great oceans of the world. And China's building a massive canal from scratch in, in Nicaragua as we speak. But they already own the Panama Canal, and people are very worried in the local economy there that all these Chinese are being brought in to support the construction of the Nicaraguan Canal and the expansion of the Panama Canal. And they're taking away jobs from locals. Well, we already see that in, in the United States, foreigners coming in, taking away jobs. So as the indigenous American population who comes from families of pioneers, there's a difference between an immigrant and a pioneer. My ancestors came from Scotland and, and Ireland in the 17th century to the New World, to the colonies. They were pioneers. I've been here ever since that. I exist now because of that. A whole nation and culture was made based on the principles of Greco-Roman reasoning in Europe, the Magna Carta, mm -hmm. uh, the Swiss Confederation Charter, so on and so forth. Okay, But we, we had this massive flood of foreigners coming in from third world areas into a first world advanced economy, and that's stifling economic growth and economic preservation. So when true Americans of pioneer families like myself no longer exist in this century, the military ranks will exist of what? The same cloth that you see in many third world foreign militaries. And there's not going to be America the world police anymore. But the powers that be, they want that. I personally do not believe in the superpower concept. No, that's very bad for business. America has no right, has no right whatsoever interfering in Ukraine. America has no right whatsoever interfering militarily, economically, politically in Mexico, in the north of South America. NATO, the EU, America had no right bombing Yugoslavia. It was an internal conflict, just as we had no right bombing Libya mm -hmm. to kill Gaddafi. Because, hey, look at the wonderful mess, hardy har har, that NATO, Western Europe, and America has made in Libya. So you have all these desperate people as refugees flooding into Europe for help. Well, obviously, because the West destroyed their towns. And those profiting from that, right, they don't care because they, they live in their high towers. So I want education to be something available to all, but that only comes through free will. Mm -hmm. And most people are not using their free will wisely. And, and let's, talk, let's talk about uh, the that well the empire you know that that's what empires do and uh, you know one thing i've been doing over the past year since i've been assigned some uh, new history courses is i've been having to review and read a lot of history and you know whatever one might think of winston churchill he does have some admir admirable qualities you know one of them was his manliness and his intellect and i like a lot of his quotes he said if you look far enough back in history you may be wise enough to see far ahead into the future and you know i urge people to spend less time on frivolousness and, and more time doing some serious study. And, and what I learned is that, you know, the more history you, you read, the greater perspective and, and objective analysis you're going to have on current events because people have this normalcy bias, I guess. And when you study history objectively, you can step away from the current moment in time and observe what, what's happening 
Um, kind of like you know, people are in the eye of the storm, and they don't see the storm, but when you step outside, you see really how big the the, the storm is. And so my point is, historically, you know, you mentioned fiat money. All currencies die. That's a fact. Historically, there are natural laws. Empires rise and fall. There's no exception. You know, the average age of empire is what 223 years. So, you know, it seems like let's talk a little bit about the collapse you brought up, Rome uh, of America. It seems America has had her day in the sun, and and, and China is coming up. And we, we went to the beach here over the weekend in, in Mexico. And the first restaurant we stopped to have lunch next to us were a Chinese family ordering food in, in Spanish. You know, so that's something you would see Americans in the world a generation ago, and now it's the Chinese are everywhere. So that 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 boils down to economic crop rotation. So China has been a cohesive civilization for five thousand years, regardless of the fact of their warring states period, which obviously ended towards um, the turn of the millennia. Uh, around um, 100 BC and going into the time of the birth of Christ. But China, the empire is being passed to them as the empire was passed to America from Britain and the Spanish empire passed the empire to Britain. But before that, the Ottoman empire was one of the central world powers, east to west, west to east. And before the Ottoman empire was the world power, you had the Byzantine empire in the east, which was a layover from, from, from the Roman Empire. And you had the Greek Empire before that with Alexander the Great. But before the Greeks came to the Middle East, you had the Persians, an Eastern power. Before the Persians were there, you had, you had the Assyrians. And before that, you had Babylon, you had Egypt. Egypt lasted 5,000 years as a unique civilization, a culture. 5,000 years. They were around that long. So it's been 2,000 years since the, since, since the birth of Jesus, right? And then we go back even farther than that, 2,000 years to the construction of the Great Pyramids of Giza with the Pharaoh Khufu and everything with the Great Pyramid. And you, and you keep going all the way back to the ancient Sumerians, which gave us writing, which they gave us the wheel, all right? But it, it's, it's, it's very interesting to me how foreigners um, – and I, I've been a lot of places in the world, a lot of places in the world. These are foreign places to me, but they are definitely fellow human beings. And most people will be polite to you, and, and they'll try to work with you, because those that have the least seem to want to give the most. You have the rabble-rousers, of course, that continue the divide. Now, when you have the mixing of cultures, religions, and civilizations extremely fast, you constantly have conflict. That's why there's always been war. That's why there's always going to be war. The, this idea of a one-world society and this one-world government and everything, that's, that's failing already. It's already failing. You, you can't put things together that are polar opposites. So as China comes in and, and takes over superpower status, Russia is dying not only as a power but as a people. The entire white race, all Caucasoids, all people descendants of Europe, whether they be Celts, Germanic peoples, or Slavs, are dying. They will not exist by the end of this century because they do not breed. It's mathematics. Eastern peoples continue to breed as Western peoples fade away. Mathematics. How's the world going to look in the 22nd century? Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's the big question of people. So I want people to think about that when, when they go to bed tonight because those that have created advanced technology, made medical breakthroughs, the automation of manufacturing, when those people that made that are no longer around, will those technologies continue to exist? That's a big question. And since we have, uh, well, as always, uh, limited time, um, perhaps we can comment on geopolitically looking at the world today. Uh, you know, we can start anywhere, but what crises uh, would be at the top of your mind? You know, for example, I'm looking at the colder war between the U.S. and Russia with China in the background, which we briefly touched on. The global financial crisis with, with Greece at the helm, as well as the rise of authoritarianism among governments worldwide as a reaction to the ongoing depression which includes the surveillance state, which is, I guess, your department since you work in cybersecurity. So, 
you know, what, what's one, one thing we can, we can talk about right now, one crisis that, you know, you've been following? It will go back to information. Since the advent of advanced satellite telecommunications, information travels so rapidly that the ability to think before one acts has been muted. And that's not good. The olden days took, well, days, weeks, months, years for information to travel. This decisions were made in a more thought-out way. Yet again, the world was globally far more ruthless and violent. That ruthlessness and violence still exists, but not necessarily in every place in the world currently, although that will return. Don't think you're safe. I'm talking to your listeners. Don't think you're safe. Don't, don't think that the beheadings and the bombings are not going to come to your town, to your neighborhood, to your home, to your apartment, because they will. It's math. Math proves that. If math is done correctly, it is not incorrect. So I just, I just want to mention, since you know, since you bring up this, you know, Greece coming to a town near you, and I'm sure you've got plenty of stories, and I've got some as well. You know, I've lived in five countries all over the world, and I've been physically assaulted um, in a number of them. And uh, you know, here in Mexico, things are generally okay. People have a skewed vision of, of Mexico, but my house has been broken into uh, three times. Uh, you know, uh, two months ago, the drug cartels basically shut down our town, uh, like in a Batman movie. They they burned about 20 bu buses around town and completely stopped traffic. They call them the narco blockades. Five minutes from my house, there was a, bur a bus that was burned. Um, we were going on vacation. And, and just yesterday, in outside my um, my house, one of the security guards of our gated community, he uh, he was run over by a truck and dismembered uh, you know right in front of our eyes so you know it's 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 everywhere you know i've lived in first world and in third second and third world and and it, it happens everywhere and as you say as time goes on and the situation gets worse it's going to be happening at an increasing rate people act the same all over the planet no, no matter where they're from they want food in their stomach they want a warm body next to them in their bed and they want something to entertain them and something to do during the day so that they seem that they have worth. That's normal human behavior. We've been so hooked into, uh, into technology um, at such a fast rate that h humanity's engineering skills have gone ahead way faster than our moral and ethical skills and that goes into self-control and self-discipline. Um, and and I, I want people to learn about information, how to use information, because like you said, that's what I do. Read everything, believe nothing, listen to all, follow none. That's what it's all about. And um, don't don't ever have the defeatist attitude. Yes, you're going to lose people that you care about, and you might follow yourself. That's beside the point. I learned in infantry school when I was in the when I was in the Corps, when I was in the Marines that. You have to accept the fact that you're already dead. As soon as you accept that fact, you can do what's necessary to accomplish your mission. To paraphrase Albert Einstein, there would be no wars if soldiers and young people refused to fight them. Okay, But a major global conflict is being designed to keep your focus, my focus, everyone's focus off the economic trend. The debt cannot continue at the levels it's at and at the levels – that the debt's going to be. We, we have to get away from that. So think about what you can do on an individual basis and on a community basis to relearn the ways of your ancestors to be self-sufficient. You can have all the modern surgical technology to take care of acute medical crises. You, you can have that, but that doesn't mean that those technologies have to be doing everything else for you. For God's sakes, there's there's hats, little helmets that have been around since the 60s where you put in two beer cans with a long plastic tube to drink beer or soda at a, at a sports game. It's like, wow, that, that's, that's pretty ingenious. And the guy in the van that made, made, made a lot of money, but that's just one example of the laziness of a technologically advanced society because look at all the robots that are being engineered and 
procured in Japan to take care of elderly people. Because most people in, in Japan, after the end of the Second World War, they didn't really have children. And that's, that's what's good about people from Central and South America currently is that, is that they are having children to continue the labor to provide for the family as the parents and grandparents age. But there's going to come a point where the corporatism, there's a difference between capitalism and corporatism. Capitalism is good. Real capitalism works. Real capitalism creates prosperity. It creates equality. It, it creates opportunity. The, the corporatism is fascism. It is a manipulated system. You, you talk about drug cartels. Well, drug cartels are just low-level employees for the ultimate cartel that's running the global financial sector. And the Chinese know that. And I want people in the East to be very careful. Don't trust the Chinese that they're going to solve all the problems of, of America being fat and bloated and falling over everyone. No, you're you're just trading one dictatorship for another. Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly you know what I learned and what I was saying when you study history. It's like, uh, you know, America is doing a lot of bad things, and you 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 kind of want to switch over and like oh, maybe the Chinese, you know, they're not going to be that bad. But empire is empire, and you go back to any previous empire in history, it's generally the same core sentiment. You know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. So. Mm-hmm. 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 You are a very wise man because you opened your ears. People got to hear. They don't need to listen. They they, they need to hear. It's, it's two different things. Try, try try walking a mile in someone else's shoes or a kilometer if you're outside the States or whatever. But I, I, I have a good friend from Israel who always told me that Americans don't know much about the world because America's big. Because America's big, you don't have to go somewhere else to ski. You don't have to go somewhere else to go mountain climbing. You don't have to go somewhere else to go surfing. Everything's in America. And he says in Israel, is very small. So Israelis travel everywhere. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's good. I, I want more people to travel. But with, with, the, with the authoritarian, autocratic mindset, that it, a, a, actually that's a normal thing. Predominantly in history, there's been tyranny. Liberty is something that's only exists in a small pockets for very, um, for very short durations. And uh, the freest place in the world to this day is Switzerland. Everyone mm -hmm. thinks America is. No, it's it's Switzerland, because Switzerland, with the Swiss Confederation Charter, with with the old Swiss Confederation, and in, in, in the 13th century, those ideas were the first rediscovery of the principles of the Roman Republic of ancient Athenian democracy. Switzerland does not stick its nose in other people's business. America has been a massive country since the founding, since the colonization, even before it was a country. But America didn't start getting involved in foreign affairs until the Spanish-American War. Of course, the, the, the whole spark that lit the fuse is another false flag, just as we've seen many, many false flags from there. And... Um, there's capability within everyone, but you got to let them discover it on their own. And unfortunately, they're going to have to bleed. Mm -hmm. People that have bleed and been traumatized and seen very bad things and had bad things done to them, they at least encounter the choice of the fork in the road to either go down a self-medicating, self-destructing road to drown away their sorrow, or they can go the other way and use that sorrow and that trauma as energy to fuel their focus and determination to get power for themselves and wield it responsibly to help the helpless. And, and to touch on the Switzerland, you know, I've lived in Switzerland, great place, very expensive. Um, and to tell you the truth, uh, I've known a lot of people there who, you know, it's hard to make it in Switzerland, um, especially if you want to find a good job you, have, you oftentimes you have to volunteer for a while intern for a while uh, meanwhile it's very expensive and uh, I can't tell you how many people that I knew while I was there that desperately tried to to get an in into Switzerland you know to get a job to find a way to stay in, in Switzerland and some some succeeded but I, uh, most of them failed so yes you have to try you can't be afraid to try 
we we've all been in situations where we're afraid to try because we might not like the outcome. But those that fail a lot, okay, hey, you're you're accumulating a lot of experience, and you only need to be successful one time. And, and, and you're set for life. That's that's the thing about business. Business is a game, a wonderful game, if you know how to play it. And don't use money to control others. Use money to secure and provide for yourself. Because it, 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 if you can't take care of your own life and your own finances, how are you going to take care of someone else? And kind of segueing back into Greece a little bit, you have certain commentators and talking heads in, in the corporate press lambasting Greeks, oh, they're lazy, they're corrupt, they don't want to work. How can they do that when all their jobs, because of globalism, the 1980s were shipped to the Far East? How can they do that when their politicians hoodwinked an entire nation of people who were, who were uneducated? See, there's a difference between being literate and being educated. And guess what? you got to have literacy to learn about what education is and vice versa, but People are desperate. They have nothing because their politicians threw away their future to get money now. Mm -hmm. And if if the public wants to fix their country, like I said, from my experience in the military and my suggestion to vets, you don't expect that the government or even society itself or in some cases your family are going to give you anything. You have to go take it for yourself. We're at the point now where there's not even reward for merit. There's not even a reward or progress for earning your own keep because the powers that be don't want people to be independent, to be free thinkers. They want you to be a little worker bee, a little worker ant. They dominate you in all different ways. Get angry. I want people to get angry. They need to get organized. They need to get organized, and they need to think together that no one owns us. We own ourselves. We need to have meaningful partnerships. The bartering system is how true economics has functioned since the first tribes came in contact with each other. Money is just supposed to be an in-between thing. All right. But yeah, the precious metals, obviously, people, countries need to go back to a metal standard it, it, that's what China's doing. It, it, China's actually in, in consideration for backing the yuan and gold, and they already have the renminbi, which is a secondary currency that's in gold in some circumstances. India's big on gold. Many places in Southeast Asia, big on gold. You, you, you look at Mexico, the Aztec Empire, hey, they had a lot of gold because, hey, that, r money is gold. That's the way it's always been. Um, and... There's options now for the electronic digital currencies, the cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, and there's thousands of others that exist now. I did an interview last fall, and the host had another guest on simultaneously, and they were asking me questions about Bitcoin. I was trying to explain how it worked, mm -hmm. and they couldn't grasp the concept of how it has value because they were, they were, they were trying to explain it in a fiat manner or in a gold-backed manner. And it's a different thing. And it has value because of electricity. Electricity, it takes money to create electricity. So to get a lot of Bitcoins at 0 0.00001 bytes per nanosecond over many, many months and years, that's a lot of electricity going into servers. So you're paying the electricity fees the longer that electricity runs, the more servers you have, the more energy it takes, and then you transfer that during the exchange, during the exchange when, when you're selling your Bitcoins on the market. You can mine them yourself and make actual fiat or gold-backed currency, or you can trade like stocks in those and, and do the same thing. There's many, many options, but people got to get – they have to get financially educated – yeah, um, uh -huh. I mean, it took me the longest while to to buy my first ounce of silver uh, and gold because for the longest time you're brainwashed and you just start learning about these things and you're kind of fearful because you're putting down a lot of money and, and gold and silver and you're wondering, is that the, was that what I should be doing? And then, but once you start it, it's like the floodgates open and you know you're learning how to protect yourself and to live independently. 
it's kind of interesting how the CIA, MI6 backed terrorist organizations in the Middle East right now are running amok. They're um, minting their own gold and silver coins. Mm -hmm. Wow, what do hmm, what do they know that we don't know? Yeah, isn't that something? Isn't that something? It always goes back to gold and silver. So you know. It's in the U.S. Constitution, right? It says only gold and silver will be legal tender, as well as if you go back to the Old Testament, uh, gold and silver are basically considered, along with animals, considered wealth. Land, uh, animals, and gold and silver, pretty much. Well, so. absolutely. And that's putting into league as though we're living in a sane world with rational variables. Now, money is getting drunk and making a fool out of yourself, posting pictures on social media. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're living in a total end time scenario. And uh, <laughs> I don't know how much longer this uh, charade can be supported. And yeah, food in the stomach. As long as people got food in their stomach, they're, they're not going to do anything. Yes, I want physical action. I want physical secession. I am a strong proponent of secession. Absolutely. If there is one area of a country that is financially stable and responsible and socially responsible, okay, and they are tired of supporting and being associated with the basket case of the other area of the country, they have the right to break off and do their own thing. Why not? You have the option to walk away from the table. If you're playing cards and you're finished losing hand after hand and you're tired of gambling, you can get up and walk away. Now, what's going to happen? I asked Mr. Mr. Moritz this and all the, all the listeners. What's going to happen when those at the table stand up and try to force you to sit back down to continue to, to gamble so more of your money can be stolen? What are you going to do? That, that's the thing. Offensive action in warfare, those uh, those who fired the first shot are, are going to be judged by history, okay? But if you're tired of participating in something that is unhealthy, that is detrimental to your prosperity and survival, you have the right to leave. And if they want to make you stay, then you defend yourself. People need to defend themselves. Okay, and as we come to a close, I just have a few more one or two more points. What do you think of new media today? So, you know, I would consider you new media, alternative media, unconventional media. We don't have to get into conventional media because we know what a joke they are. And, you know, one reason I started this podcast, and it might be a bit selfish, is that, honestly, I don't have anyone around me capable of discussing what's really happening. And even if they are capable, they, they don't really care. And, uh, you know, it was Dr. Paul Craig Roberts who once told me in my class that we're privileged and with that privilege comes uh, responsibility. And I truly believe if you have a voice, the resources, the time to do something, you know, you said in your spare time you run fullspectrumdominance.com. So, you know, what, how do you see this new media? Um, it's, it's, it, it has a ways to go. There's a lot of infighting and a lot of treachery between independent operations. Because some of those independent operations are indeed federal agents, not only of the United States, but of Mexico or anywhere else. There's always going to be moles. There's always going to be the saboteurs. And the people, people got to be very careful about that. They, they need to verify. I have relationships with actual writers and reporters and stuff around the world that – They'll, they'll say, hey, I, I got this lead. I'm going to go check it out. Or someone in Ukraine or um, uh, somebody in the Philippines will stay in touch with me and send me a video of a firefight that's happened between one faction and another faction, and it's just raw data. And you look at that, and you verify it, and you try to see other sources. So the technology – exists, the miniaturization of the technology and, and the mass production of the technology for smartphones and video cameras and laptops and tablets and everything, that's, that's all great. That, that means anyone can do it. 
but but like you said, there's there's got to be that responsibility. Um, people got to be careful. They got to be very very careful. And there is internets within internets now. Kind of going into a little bit of technical things. Mm -hmm. People might have heard the terms of like the dark net, which is used for um, a lot of illegal purposes, and like like you got your main it World Wide Web. But then you have undernets. You have internets within internets. And those that are in IT, unless they're at a certain level, they don't even know about it themselves. And you know that's that's something we can we can really talk about in another episode, given your background. But you know, I believe the internet as we have it today came from the American military. No, it goes back in some way or another. Yes. De decades. Yes. Yeah, well, well, the internet was. Uh, it, it first was derived internally in the, in the 1970s with not only the United States Air Force, but also these associated um, non-governmental agencies, well, not agencies, but companies, which is, yeah, that's definitely worrisome. I mean, like, yeah, like, you got to have the private sector for innovation, but the relationship, uh, President Eisenhower warned us about the military-industrial complex, um, but the basic Internet started out, as an internal local, as a local internet. So you have local internets with, like you have your intra, intra, intra nets, then you have internets themselves. So it started out, it's just a local internal thing for um, strategic command and control purposes. And then the initial code and networking technology was obsolete and it was sold to the private sector and it was improved upon that's the official story, but I guess that the other official story is that Al Gore yeah. in, invented the internet. So, and, and and I would really I don't know if you've read the article, but there was a great article that was posted uh, 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 two months ago by Nafiz Ahmed, who's a PhD and uh, author. Uh, he posted it with his uh, journalist investigative journalism group called Insurge Intelligence on Medium.com, and he basically factually showed us, and I never knew this how. Basically, the Larry and Sergey from Google, they were studying at Stanford, and the funds that they were receiving from the university were coming from the CIA and the NSA for developing Google. So they indirectly, which is pretty much the same thing, were funded by you know the Pentagon. So it's really mind-boggling. Yes, that all that stuff was featured on FSD when it broke. The gentleman went through his contacting networks to get it out to FSD and al along with Medium and, and some other places. And it was out there, and it's all true because looking at the process of elimination, how can a couple of guys at, out of college yeah. <laughs> who, who run an office and they build they, – they built maybe like half a dozen servers, and you know this was like a big CRT – monitor days the late 90s early 2000s and those guys did that and like a year later 16 18 months later they're on, they're on their way to making billions of profits well here here's the explanation is that like it's it's the government the the government is out there but the government is not to be feared like uh everyone's taught and scared to believe it should be feared if that makes strange sense yes it, because the government is just so damn bloated and incompetent um they, they they don't know what they're doing like today with the stock market thing and united airlines and they say oh it was a technical problem we did a patch update on our software well you must be running microsoft server 2008 or something and okay someone did a patch update and just screwed it up uh, or and then it's like, hey, it, it wasn't a cyber intrusion. And they're playing damage control. No, guys, there's there are 14 year olds in a room at home in Singapore or in Delhi, India, who can write code, open source code, and find a little security breach. Over 90 percent, over 90 percent of malware and unauthorized intrusions are put into devices networks and the internet itself because of a simple basic thing not being activated or updated within a system active directory directory services is the thing that makes all the windows server operating systems work so that 
hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of computers and a huge mega, mega corporation or government agency can all talk to each other and, and share information. And if, if one person who is a user or a computer is added to that Active Directory domain and the right credentials and the certificates for client computers are not set up properly, there's your doorway. And anyone can get in there and just wreak havoc. And these big corporations and these big governments, they don't care. They don't care. They're fat and happy. They're losing millions and millions of dollars. The average cyber breach in the United States, according to data so far, first quarter of this year, okay, the average amount of money is over $5 million per day of the organization is lost in IT security breaches. So a company is actually needing to spend $15 million a year or more, depending on the size of the company, how many servers, how many employees, just in security, just in preventative maintenance to prevent that $5 million a day loss. Do you see the numbers that are involved here? Mm -hmm. It's a total racket. It's unstoppable. And I want people to de-connect disconnect, get off the computers, get off the internet, go back to some wholesome things. Go out there, play with the family, farm your own crops, raise your own animals, look at the sunset, fly a kite, read a book. We, we need to start going back to the old things. Yeah, yeah. That's what makes us human. And, and I, you know, I also lived in Central Asia and uh, out there in the desert. And uh, I marveled when I saw the young children, even the high school children, playing with a volleyball, you know, playing sports, just playing with a ball all day for eight hours and being content and not getting bored. And here we are now, you know, here I am <laughs> with all these kids with their social networks and technology and they're going mad. You know, they're going crazy because they've lost the plot. They've lost the wholesome things, as you mentioned. Well, it's a good time to invest in internet addiction clinics. Like in Korea, right? Or, or yeah, China and everything. And they see, I, I just gave a free economic tip to all your listeners because I'm a nice guy. And speaking of tips, well, we've come to, to, the, to the end here. And as I always ask the guests, uh, do you have any words of caution or wisdom, especially for the next generation? If you think you have it, you don't. If you know you have it, you do. Computers aren't the thing. They're the thing that gets us to the thing. What is that thing for you? It's, it's quite the riddle. <laughs> I'm sure that that'll be a lot for people to chew on for a while. Um, well, Xander, thanks for your time. You know, I followed FSD, full, full dash spectrum dash dominance dot com for years. And it's, it's uh, been a pleasure speaking with you for the first time. Um, hopefully we can do this again in the future. Any final comment? Hey, I appreciate it, Mr. Morich. It's been awesome, and we'll do it again anytime.